These are the urinals at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. If you look a little closer, you'll notice they each have a quirky design feature a fly painted inside the bowl. Why have they added this fly? Unfortunately, I'm not here to lecture you on the latest interior design trends of 2021. What I am here to do is tell you, as a Cambridge Psychology graduate, why these little flies are so important in psychology and behavioural economics. The psychological theory behind these flies, nudge theory, is already being used to influence every area of your life, from the food you eat, to where you spend your money, to climate change. Nudge theory goes well beyond the men's bathroom. In fact, the governments of the US, UK, India, Australia, and many other countries already have departments dedicated to this kind of practice. The main book to go by for nudge theory is this one, Nudge written by behavioural economists Richard Thaler and Cass Sunstein. One of the first examples they cite is these very urinals. The idea behind adding the flies is that it gives men something to aim at. After adding the flies, the amount of spillage from these urinals reduced by 80%. In fact, there's an even better version of this at the National Football Museum in Manchester, where there's a little ball and net at the bottom of the bowl. Just hours of fun right there. But this is not a video about the world's best urinals, it's about nudging behaviour. So, to get back to the video, a nudge is something that can change behaviour in a predictable way without removing any of the options or offering financial incentives. So adding a fly doesn't forbid people from missing the target or offer a financial incentive, but it does change behaviour. Nudging capitalises on what Daniel Kahneman calls System 1 thinking, the automatic subconscious thinking like when you're asked to complete the phrase salt and or you automatically orient towards the source of a loud noise. Often when we're making a decision we don't have time to fully utilise system 2 thinking which is slow, deliberate and conscious. So this leaves the door open for us to be nudged. Here are some more important examples of nudging aside from flies on urinals. One of the earliest examples of nudges is road markings. On this dangerous ESCO in Chicago, there were lots of accidents taking place. So the city added these lines on the road, which get closer together as you come towards the bend to give you the illusion that you're going faster. When people see this, they're being nudged to slow down and accordingly accidents were reduced after these lines were added. Organ donation. Most people want to donate their organs after they die, but far fewer are actually become organ donors. If there's an active opt-in system for organ donation, people can't be bothered to go through the hassle of signing up to become an organ donor. So some countries nudge using an active opt-out system where you're opted in by default and you have to actively opt out if you don't want to donate. Other countries have a system where you're made to make the choice. For example, every time you renew your passport, being asked, do you want to become an organ donor, yes or no? Both of these systems improve donation rates. Food. In canteens, placing the salad bar in front of the unhealthy food increases the amount that salad's purchased because you have to go buy the salad bar to get to the burgers and chips and the actually nice food. This is a similar idea to supermarkets. Producers pay more to get their products put at the end of aisles because we naturally scan them as we walk around corners. Putting products at the end of aisles actually increases sales by up to 114%. Littering. Say you see a flyer in the windshield of your car and you aren't interested in what it says, so you want to throw it away. Social psychologist Robert Cialdini found that in this situation, if there are other flyers already on the ground, you're eight times more likely to litter yours on the ground too. The principle of this research is behind how governments can very easily nudge you. The Behavioural Insights team, nicknamed the Nudge Unit, was created in the UK government in 2010. Its goal was to use nudging and other behavioural techniques to pay for itself in government savings within two years or it would be disbanded. So how did they do this? Two examples I'm going to share with you today are firstly tax. It turns out that adding just one line to a reminder letter that says 9 out of 10 people in the UK pay their tax on time increased the payment rate by 1.5%. An alternative line increased the payment rate by 2%, which said that most people in your local area pay tax on time. And a final alternative, which said that most people with the debt specifically like yours have already paid, increased the payment rate by 5.4%. We're influenced a lot by what we perceive as socially normal, especially those close to us and those in a similar situation. Secondly, fines. You're more likely to pay a fine when the reminder addresses you by name and states the exact amount that you owe. And for motoring fines, attaching a picture of your car taken by a roadside camera makes you even more likely to pay up on time. So with a whole bunch of government interventions like these, the Behavioural Insights team did not get disbanded. In fact, it paid for itself 10 times over in savings and is still going today 11 years later. So from a simple fly on a urinal, we've arrived at how the government is manipulating you. And I think that is a fitting note to end the video on.